I was presented with a picture, an idea, a dream, and now I'm standing in front of the reality. All right, guys, ready? Yeah. Ooh, slippery dick. Look at this piece. That's gonna be beautiful. All right, so the organs of the system. We got a really nice setup, kind of walk you through it, kind of give the ins and outs, what it is, why we do it. First thing here is our remote fuge. If you haven't noticed, we really like remote fuges. It's a great way to separate the algaes from everything else. If you ever had Kato in a pump or in an overflow or in your display, clogging up your return pump, it's no fun. So by doing it remotely, we don't have to worry about pretty much any of that. So what we do is we start off with our main chamber and we have a pump on the inside that runs water in where we have it drill the bulkhead, comes in the one side, mixes up inside, and then it goes down the overflow back into our system. We run two AI fuge lights. We really like these fuge lights. They work really well, tried and true, proven time and time again. You usually set them up, forget them. They just work. They're really, really good. As you can see, they obviously grow stuff well too. The Takeda one here started out as like a little, you know, softball. Wasn't very much. We've had to harvest many times over again. Grows really, really well. The lots of micro um, LGs and bacteria to build up in our bio bricks. There's about 23,000 cubic feet of surface area per brick. There's over a dozen of them in the sump alone. They work really, really well. Makes a very robust bacterial population. So from there, as it comes through and back in, our main drains run from here to gate valves. That's so we can kind of make the system ultra quiet, super silent comes through here to our two Red Sea reef mats. We really like the reef mats. We really like that they took the time to make them right. They're, and as you know, heard before, unapologetically large. And that's because they work. They're easy. You're not trying to fish a you know, string through a needle. It's really easy to change, really easy to maintain. They work really well. One tip of it I can give you, is bring them up as high as you can. So we originally had them here, and what was happening is they were just burning through the rolls. So we have we put them on the legs, put them on the bricks, get them up higher. They last a lot longer. It takes about 24 to 36 hours for the things in the roll itself to start breaking down. So the, the, way, the amount of flow through it, they roll pretty regularly. We don't have to worry about them sitting in the water too long and not being as effective as they should be. They're working really awesome. We really like them. From there, we're going to go to our Reef Octopus Skimmer. We love them. They're running a lot of tanks. I personally have one. It's been rock solid. It took less than a day for it to break in. And from there, it is the pulled skimmate. Awesome sense. Very reliable, very quiet, very consistent. Definitely a piece worth having. From there, we have our end chamber where we have even more biomedia. And the idea here is more surface area, more bacteria, more robust. And as you see, it's growing pineapple sponges. Don't worry about those guys. <laughs> so as you can see, it's working really well. Um, the main heart is the Abyss, the Abyss A400. It's been a very powerful pump. We run this one at about 65%, and that's more than enough to only run up through the ceiling, down, over, back, and up into the display. It's doing an awesome job, no problems whatsoever. And that's, that's like about 65%. So if we wanted to, we could go up more, but there's just no need to. So real awesome pump, nice and quiet, great warranty. We love it. We have a couple doses, so we got them online today. This one here is going to be dosing Neo Nitro and Kato Grow. One thing with a big fuge like this is it's pretty easy to strip the tank of nutrients. So usually what we find is we're trying to battle phosphates more than we're battling nitrates. So we end up dosing Neo Nitro to make sure there's available nutrients because if there's no nitro, then nitro, nitrates, if there's no nitrates, Kato's not going to grow. It's not going to grow. It's not going to pull phosphates. So we're dosing Neo Nitro to keep the system above zero. And then the other one we're doing Kato Grow. Kato Grow pulls quite a bit of, you know, Kato pulls out a lot of elements. There's iron, strontium, molybdenum, all sorts of stuff that come out naturally, not only from coral growth, but also from the Kato. So by replacing it with Kato Grow and make sure that the water parameters are right where they need to be so it can keep growing, be big and healthy, do what it's supposed to do, which it does very well. On our next dose, we set up an auto water change on this one. So with this system being about 400 gallons, for now we're gonna do about a 50% water change a month. That's about 22,000 milliliters of water every day that the system's gonna go through. And with our containers for our setup here, two 200 gallons 
We run about 180, 190-ish. You don't want them too full because if you make them too full, then you put salt, then they overflow, that's no good. So we bring them down a little bit, about 190 gallons available. So we're gonna mix all of this up and it's gonna do this whole thing every month. And if that's not enough, we can do 180 more of RO, move it over, mix it again, and we could do a 100% water change with the doses every month if we wanted to. The dose will do about 32 gallons a day of in and out. So lots of water, good water changes, keep everything happy, healthy. And one thing we have found is our best looking tanks, our fastest growing tanks, our healthiest tanks, get a lot of water changes. Heavy in and heavy out, pretty much our mantra around here. So great system here. The other one we're running, the third and last, is gonna run our alkalinity and calcium. So kind of a nice system with our Trident. It's gonna test regularly. It does have a feature to where as the Trident tests alkalinity and calcium, you can set the dose up to adjust up and down a percentage, generally 35 to 40%. So if you set it to say 100 mils a day of alkalinity, as a Trident reads lower, it can actually up the alkalinity dosing up to 40% more, so up to 140 mils a day. Or the opposite, if you find your alkalinity is going up because of your Trident readings, it'll actually reduce it up to 40, reduce it down to 40% a day, et cetera. So cal calcium and alkalinity are going here. And then we have a nice system. We really like this setup for our auto top offs. It's lots of redundancy. So we're running it right off the RO unit, but we're using the one tunes controller to use the two, the two floats. So as they both drop, then the whole thing will fill back up to they both float. That way we're not on off, on off, on off, which tends to burn out our resin and our DI canisters for our RODI unit. From there, there's also a float just, just to triple check to make sure if for some reason the solenoid for the tunes unit would autom like were to fail, get a rock or something in it, it's got a float. And if both were to fail, we do have the FLK-14, which is a sponge manual shutoff. So if it gets wet, the sponge expands, physically flipping the switch, shutting the whole thing off before it ever could reach the top and spill out of this. Very redundant, very safe. It's a great system and it's easy on, easy on us. We're not constantly filling up a container. Works really well. From there, we have our seven stage, well, I mean, more than that, it'd be eight stage. So we're running our one micron sediment, two one micron carbon blocks, and that's gonna run through dual 75 a day, a gallon a day RO membranes. So we got 150 gallons a day. From there, it goes through our three DIs, cation, anion, and a mixed bed just in case. We are running the booster pump system, so we're getting a rock solid 90 PSI at all times, which is gonna give us the most efficiency. The lower the efficiency, the more wastewater, the less good water, which isn't great. We're already wasting, that's about three to one as a typical system. This kind of cuts it down to you know, one to one, which is kind of nice. So automatic flush valve, so we don't have to worry about flushing our own membranes. And then it's got a pressure switch on it as well, so it automatically shuts the pump off. Really good system. We ended up going with the L2 on our mixing station, just so that we can mix water quickly and then also move water quickly. So when we do our water changes, it's easy to move the water that we need from our system into here, but it also, with one inch plumbing, comes up and mixes in our system. Slick setup, slick design. Every time we put one of these in, nothing but good. They rant and rave, it's awesome. Even when they have brutes before, to switch from brutes to a full on water change station, night and day. We make it easy, we'll do it. If it's a chore, you neglect it. So the easier, the better. That's also the auto water change comes in and then we have the available water to a manual water change if we really need to. So the whole system runs really well and smooth. Everything works as the way it should. We're loving it. We've still got some cleaning up to do. We'll do some wire cleaning up here and there. Make it really nice and presentable. Make it as nice as we can make the tank. So thanks for coming in, checking it out, talking to me. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, have a good day.